Hey, I'm Noah. Hey, I'm Tim. And this is our ongoing comic strip AP of Dogs in the Vineyard. All right, so this time I'm in the player's seat. We are circling back to Sister Clementine. So that means Noah is GMing. Yep. We're hearing about Clementine. And this time we're also going to have a flashback with her. Yeah, and we're going to flashback because in character creation, in Dogs... The first session is normally an initiation session where um, we learn how the characters became a dog. We didn't do it in the game. Um, I don't know why. We just decided not to. <laughs> but um, we're going to do it now. So we're going to flash back to it. And this is what you would see at the beginning of a typical dog's game. Nice. And there's a little uncertainty because in terms of what's at stake, that's going to be a trait on my character sheet. And I don't know how it's going to turn out. Until okay. we've done the initiation. All right. Yeah. Let's see how this one goes. Cool. Let's jump into it. Bridal Falls, where all watchdogs of the King of Life are trained to be shepherds of their flock. Squat, whitewashed buildings surround a towering granite temple, home of the order set apart to the preservation of faith and the faithful. One can just make out Bridal Falls, for which the town gets its namesake, tumbling from the highest peak to the valley floor thousands of feet below my name is sister clementine and this early spring day is like a homecoming to me and i'm a dog so this is your first time back to bridal falls right three years three years wow which is abnormal many come back to visit their instructors to to hone their skills I haven't been called back, and I, I like being out and about. Mm -hmm. And what's your relationship with your with your instructors? Well, Brother Ryland, my instructor, he was whew, he was strict. He was tough. I he didn't budge an inch. He wouldn't let me get away with anything at all. Yeah, he was the kind of instructor I needed. Yeah. So, do you would you know anybody in town as you ride through? So I imagine the. The shock. I mean, I, I would have expected this, but of looking around and just seeing fresh-faced versions of everyone new, everyone I knew when I was there. Sure. Completely new faces. Hell, they don't know what's out there. And I don't see a familiar face for any direction that I look. And yeah. So you probably see maybe some other stewards that you'd recognize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but everybody here is between the ages of. 8 and 14 to mm -hmm. 15, or 40 plus, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. There's nobody a, a, of your age. Mm -hmm. So you're given a room, and they set you up, and um, your appointments for later that afternoon, you're um, set to see Brother Ryland, mm -hmm. who is your old instructor. I think at this point, it's, it's become a little more real. So I imagine in this painfully utilitarian room, I'm just staring at like the... I don't know if it's an actual mirror, the, the piece of polished metal, you know, at my reflection. Yeah. Um, braiding my hair nice and tight, you know, the way, way it should be. And nothing to be scared about. And I head on out. So you head towards that, um, that large granite building in the center. It's really blocky. And with all these protrusions of other blocky columns, mm -hmm. there's no... There's no spires that are typical of a lot of churches. Mm -hmm. It looks utilitarian, mm -hmm. it, but at the same time screams authority. Yeah, I, I look down at my, my own coat and my boots and I see the mud still spattered on there and realize that in this austere and solemn place, I maybe should have dressed differently. And I'm, I'm feeling around and I don't have my gun or my bowie knife on me. I realize how naked i feel in public places without that yeah okay and so you go to this room it's like a meeting room and you see brother rylan um he's an old man he's probably in his 60s which is old for this time mm -hmm. really tall he has his coat and it's um in tatters you know which looks, looks like a ghost probably all the colors faded out sure yeah yeah threadbare yeah it's very dull and there's holes in it, and some might be from old gunshots, but mm -hmm. some might be moth-eaten at this point. You're not, you're not positive. Mm -hmm. Sister Clementine, come in, come in. Uh, please have a seat. I pull up that 
heavy oak chair, and it loudly scrapes along the stone floor, echoes. Brother Ryland, you're, you're looking you're looking as strong as an oak. You never were a good liar. My best days are past, but somebody's got to do the administrative work around here, and, well, at least I still have my eyes. Well, you didn't mind if I'd work bringing up a, a younger generation like myself. I mean... I, I, I've carried your carried the word of flattery the, has never suited you, Clementine. I've tried to teach you that, and he he just interrupts you. <laughs> as you're, you know him to be a, a man who gets right down to business. With, with all due respect, I was flattering the the king of life's working through you, but point taken, sir. And he waves his hand. <laughs> a letter arrived about a month past about a city of Hooper. Mm-hmm. About a uh, brother, um, oh, what's his name? And he, he shuffles through some papers. A uh, brother, Cluster, your your cousin? My cousin, scraggly old thing, yeah. Yes, yeah, he's always... Well, anyway, it appears uh, Hooper is not doing well. He says most of the, the townsfolk have left. Take a deep breath. I know why I've been called here today. Well, you see, I, uh, some things, Brother Riley, know, well, they are what they are. I done, uh, the King of Life's work, and, well, ain't no dogs around after I left, so sorry to hear that those people decided to do that. I saw a problem, and I, with the train that I had, did my best. As you kind of wrap up telling them what happened, you see a silhouette in the door frame mm-hmm. standing. The door wasn't ever closed, um, and it, it's your brother, Edwin. Edwin? <laughs> yeah, why don't you describe him? So Ed, Edwin's the uh, the oldest sibling in the family. He's not the tallest or the strongest, but the way he holds his ground, and acting like he's not even trying to, he's just someone you can't knock down. His wide shoulders and a, a uncharacteristically long, blondish golden hair. Curls kind of down to his shoulders. People have told him before that he should cut it, but he just doesn't seem to care. Never stopped him in his job. And uh, I'm used to seeing him. He's either yawning and taking a short break or shooting down every target that he finds and uh, never failing to impress the ladies. So, <laughs> Okay. And so um, he's like leaning on the door jam with mm-hmm. his arms crossed and he sidles into the room and t- pulls up another oak chair and kind of punches you in the arm and he goes hey is this clem hey eddie <laughs> and uh uh brother ryland is like brother edwin i wanted to hear your account of cooper as well um, i'm glad you're here well i wrote that report and um you know it says it says what happened i shot that other steward he was a sinner i put our cousin brother cluster in charge now, Ryland, uh, that's the same story. I uh, don't see that our actions were unjustified at the moment. Now, uh, are you uh, holding us responsible for what happened afterwards? Uh, is there a course of action that you would uh, have, have more preferred in your wisdom? I mean, th- this is this is Edwin here. <laughs> I just tried to do as good as he done. So if he messed up, then I don't even know where I fit into this. Well, that is the problem. You've always tried to do as good as Edwin does. You remember your training, don't you? I thought a lot about what my first days would be like here in Bridal Falls. Uh, that some instructor would come come see me, this, this, this unmolded clay, and call out, call out, Hinkley, you know, Hinkley, uh, you gotta be good, you gotta be better. And... When I showed up, this this instructor, Brother Ryland, he called me Clem, Clementine Hinckley. Hinckley is the the family name. And it's like he didn't want to call me by my surname because my brother, who had already graduated by now, Brother Edwin, well, he was a sight to be seen. I I don't mean him nothing bad when I call him a golden boy, but shoot, that boy had some shoes that my feet could never fill, and biggest legend about golden boy brother edwin was the 
the time that he spent seven days and seven nights in the wilderness keeping two other would-be dogs not only alive but thriving as one of the final trials before he was given his gun and cloak. See, it's part of a survival training or whatnot that all would-be dogs had to do, and only three days was what the instructors would ask. Three days and three nights. Well, Edwin had no trouble more than doubling that. And as I got closer, I knew I could do better than three days. Hell, I thought I could do seven days just like my brother. So there I was with Heth and Isabel, no leaders there. And I saw my opportunity. I would lead them through the wilderness. I would make sure everyone survives. And hey, I could be out there eight days. So what's at stake? Well, I learn humility. You're out in the wilderness, and um, it's late afternoon. It's the fourth day. You've made it past what's required. Mm -hmm. Maybe you were away from the other two for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, You hear Isabel yelling your name. Clem! Clem! Clem, where are you? And you go back to the scene, and she is standing over Heath, who has... um, fallen in a small crag and it looks like he his, his leg is turned sideways it looks like he's maybe broken his leg and he's crying well I remember climbing into that little crag and picking up that squirrely little thing he of course that would have happened to him and I had no trouble dragging him on my back until that night I'm reaching day five I know we can do it but that night I didn't sleep. I was uh, getting all scratched up by branches myself, trying to find some barks, some flowers to make some sort of remedy for that leg, something to make the healing a little faster so that he could walk the next one, two, three days. I didn't sleep much that night, but I tried to put something together. That night around the fire, Heath's leg isn't looking any better. And Isabel is hounding you. You know, she's like, we're going back tomorrow no matter what. He can barely walk. We can't feed him. This is night four. Nobody's going to be mad if we come back. We were only supposed to be out three days. Dang it, Isabel. She was always a quiet one. And this is when she decides to speak up. Now, I don't remember that night too fondly. I, I don't remember much about it. She says I slapped her, but I don't think that ever happened. But they wore me down. And first thing that morning, we trudged on back. Hell, we even weren't that far from Bridal Falls. But we trudged back, and I would not speak a word to them. And I felt like I made a couple enemies that day. And when we were within sight of that big granite building, I wouldn't follow them back. I stayed out, and I said that I'd spend those last three days on my own. A dog should be strong enough to be on their own. The pneumonia I caught while I was out there, that kept me from graduating with everyone else, but I just thought it made me stronger. I don't think I ever learned humility that night. So yeah, after that kind of flashback moment of you, you know, you're not learning humility, Mm -hmm. you know, Brother Ryland is just like, uh, have, have you said hi to Heath? You know, he never he never became a dog. He never rode the same after that trial. And I think we'll end it there. Hi, this is Jason from the Gauntlet Gaming Community. If you enjoyed this episode of Comic Strip AP, please consider supporting the Gauntlet on Patreon. Our page can be found at patreon.com forward slash gauntlet. Hey, I'm Noah. Hey, I'm Tim. And we should get out that piece of paper. <laughs> which, sorry, which one? <laughs> the one that says, uh, you know, it's, wait, hold on, hold on. You know I'm going to mess it up.